Now let's look at the four hormones separately and how it regulates blood pressure in the body, in our body. And hopefully towards the end of this video we'll see how all these hormones connect with each other in response, in response to blood pressure change. Now we'll begin by looking at antidiuretic hormone, which main function is to increase blood pressure. So it is secreted in response to a decrease in blood pressure. To learn about antidiuretic hormone, we have to look at where it's secreted from. Here we have a brain. If we zoom into this area um, known as a diencephalon, or the area where the hypothalamus and pituitary glands are, we can get a better appreciation of this hormone. So zooming in, here we have the hypothalamus and the pituitary glands. We are particularly focusing on the posterior pituitary. Within the hypothalamus, there is a special nucleus known as the paraventricular nucleus, which synthesizes antidiuretic hormone. And from there, it gets stored within the posterior pituitary. When the osmoreceptors in the, thalam in the hypothalamus detects low blood pressure due to an increase in osmolarity or an increase in sodium concentration, this will cause the hypothalamus to stimulate the posterior pituitary to secrete antidiuretic hormone, also known as vasopressin. So a decrease in blood pressure essentially will cause the posterior pituitary to secrete antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone will then be secreted into the bloodstream and will travel around the body and target specific tissues particularly the kidneys, because this is where antidiuretic hormone has its function at. So here we have the kidneys. Let's look at the kidneys and just recap about the kidneys first. So the functional unit of the kidneys is the nephron. Let's just remember the structure of the nephron. We have the afferent arterial coming into the nephron head, and we have the efferent arterial leaving out. The Nephron itself is composed of the glomerulus, the proximal convoluted tubules, the loop of Henle, the distal convoluted tubules, and the collecting ducts. Antidiuretic hormone um, gets secreted by the posterior pituitary in response to a decrease in blood pressure. It will travel to the nephron and will act on the collecting ducts of the nephron to promote water reabsorption. And by promoting water reabsorption, this means it will increase plasma volume and therefore increase blood pressure. Now let's look at the second hormone, aldosterone, which is secreted in response again to a decrease in blood pressure. And its main function is to increase blood pressure. So here I'm just drawing more blood vessels to portray what is happening and what changes happens in the bloodstream. Here the bloodstream um, is going into the nephron and as you can see water is being reabsorbed into the plasma by antidiuretic hormone. But now we're fo focusing on adult aldosterone. So here we have the kidneys. Above the kidneys we have special glands known as the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands, the outer part of it, is known as the adrenal cortex, and it is this that secretes aldosterone. When there is a decrease in sodium concentration or an increase in potassium concentration, we, will, we would have a decrease in blood pressure. This will stimulate the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone will be released into the bloodstream. Aldosterone will travel around the body, but it will target specifically the kidneys and act on the distal tubule and the collecting ducts. Here it will promote sodium reabsorption as well as promote potassium secretion. So here within distal and, and collecting ducts we have sodium being reabsorbed and potassium being secreted. When we have sodium being re reabsorbed, this would mean that we will obviously have water being reabsorbed and therefore increase in plasma volume and therefore increase in blood pressure. 
Now, possibly the most important hormone that uh, has, a main, has a role in regulating blood pressure is angiotensin II. Now, the story begins with the baroreceptors within the heart. In the aorta, we have baroreceptors which can detect change in blood pressure. If the baroreceptors detect a decrease in blood pressure, this will activate the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system will then stimulate granular cells within um, the afferent arteriole or the efferent arteriole around this area. The granular cells, also known as the juxtaglomerular cells, will then release renin. Renin is an enzyme, a very important enzyme. So the juxtaglomerular cells secrete renin. Renin, what does it do? Well, the liver produces a pre-hormone known as angiotensinogen. It continuously makes this. Angiotensinogen, when catalyzed by renin, will convert to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 doesn't really do much. However, if angiotensin 1 is converted by ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme, which is predominantly located in the lungs, if angiotensin 1 is converted by ACE to angiotensin 2, angiotensin 2 is a serious hormone that causes an increase in blood pressure. Angiotensin II has many functions and targets many tissues, but, it's, but whatever it targets, it will cause an increase in blood pressure. So for example, angiotensin II stimulates the adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone will increase blood pressure. Angiotensin II will also cause systemic vasoconstriction and therefore increase blood pressure. Angiotensin II will also stimulate the thirst center in the brain causing us to drink, increasing plasma volume, which will therefore increase blood pressure. Angiotensin II also causes cardiac vascular hypertrophy, which means increase in muscle, increase in contraction, which means increase in blood pressure. So as you can see, angiotensin II has many effects, all of which increases blood pressure. So the three hormones we looked at antidiuretic hormone, aldosterone, and angiotensin II, they all increase blood pressure. So they all are secreted or produced in response to a low blood pressure. So what hormones are there that um, essentially decrease blood pressure, that want to decrease blood pressure? Well, there is one hormone which is secreted by the heart. Let's have a look at the heart anatomy uh, to recap and understand about this hormone. So here we have the heart, here we have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The, inf the superior and infer inferior vena cava brings blood into the right atrium. Now, if we have a hypervolemic state, meaning we have hypertension, there can be many things happening. First of all, if we're in a hypervolemic state, we can have cardiac distension, which means that we can have stretching in the right atrium. Or we can have sympathetic stimulation, that we have a hypervolemic state. Or there is a detection of a lot of angiotensin II. Essentially, all of this means there is, an, there is, an, there is high blood pressure. If there is high blood pressure and all these mechanisms, uh, cardiac distension, for example, occurs, this will stimulate the atrial myocytes to secrete atrial natriuretic peptide. Atrial natriuretic peptide is a hormone and causes vasodilation, which decreases blood pressure, but also it inhibits the release of renin and therefore the production of angiotensin II. Thus, anti, um, um, atrial natriuretic peptide is a inhibitor of the, you can say, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, but it's very weak compared to the other hormones that increase blood pressure.